five bucks. I'd like to call the meeting to order. If you could please roll call. Mayor Yanish. Here. Councilmember Reese. Here. Christensen. Here. Anderson. Here. Amon. Here. Johnson. Here. Dockin. Here. Fagerly. Here. McLeod. Here. Nine present, zero absent. Thank you. Would you all please stand and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. I think we'll start with the uh, consent items. Uh, any proposed additions or deletions to the agenda? I have uh, one. Will uh, in front of you, you, the council will find the zoning appeals board appointment, Mr. Stone, and I would like to appoint him to the zoning appeals board. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that would go under the consent items, I'm assuming. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, I do have one item for miscellaneous that I'd like to bring up. Good. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to uh, approve the consent uh, agenda. Second. I'm sorry? Approve the, the, approve the consent okay. agenda. Second. A uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in Mr. favor? Mayor, yes. I'd like to pull uh, the MUC Commission minutes of October 24th and the Community Activity Center minutes of September uh, 6th and 27th. Okay. Uh, Councilman DeBlake. Is uh, Councilmember Almond's motion include the uh, appointment for Mr. Stone to the uh, Zoning Appeals Board? Yes, it would, as far as I'm concerned. I think you need a motion to add it to the consent agenda. And then mm -hmm. It's not on there. Councilman Dockin? I'd like to uh, pull uh, Rice Hospital Board minutes of October 12th. <coughs> Did you have further comments? Uh, no. I think you have to have a little bit. We need Charlie, a, you say, Charlie, we need a motion to add that? Um, yeah, so, you're I'll asking to that. add it as an agenda item, so a motion to add it to the consent item, to the agenda, on, on just the one on the zoning appointment. So you well, so make that friendly. Okay, yeah. Wait, do I have a motion to so uh, we'll, I'll add, add that to the uh, consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to add Mr. Stone to the Zoning Appeals Board appointment to the agenda, uh, to the consent agenda. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Now, where are we at? Um, you had a, um, the consent agenda items, I think that what I have is that there was a desire to remove the Rice Hospital minutes, desire to take the Municipal Utilities Commission minutes of October 24th. Um, and then also to remove the Community Activity Center Council minutes of September 6th and September 27th. That's what. Mm -hmm. Question. What, what we just passed on was just the addition. Was just to add. Yeah, to Mr. Stone. Essentially to add item K, which was the appointment of Robert Stone. But to we the still zone. have to approve the balance, consent agenda. balance, of, the balance agenda. of the consent agenda with those items pulled. Yes. So do I have a motion to approve the rest of the balance of the consent agenda with the municipal utilities, the uh, community development, and the Rice Hospital minutes pulled? You have that motion. That second motion. Already. Okay. Yeah, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. <coughs> that motion carries. Would we like to discuss the uh, municipal utilities? Uh, Th thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I just have some questions here. Maybe, Bruce, um, you, you should, might be able to answer them, too. On the uh, resolution number 40, authorizing membership in the 4M fund. Um, the 4M fund has been around since 1987. I was just reading some of the information here. Um, and the, the authorization that we're giving or the 
commissioners are giving with our review as the authorized officials or the um, general manager, the accounting supervisor, and the customer sur uh, service supervisor and transaction. Is that pretty normal or should we be, be having uh, uh, the commissioners or the city clerk or anybody else involved in that authorization of investments in their investment portfolio? I'm just curious if that <coughs> If that, if that is hinder, uh, going to hinder them or not, but I, I just question, you know, since this is a new fund, I'm not aware of it and how it works, or how will it work, if somebody could explain it to me, I would, I would appreciate it. I think I'd refer that to uh, the administrator, unless you know. Um, I do not, um, I'm not familiar with the intricacies of how that fund works. Um, I don't believe that the city has, the, I don't believe that the city clerk or, or uh, finance director has, has, has in the past been involved with the investment transactions of the MUC, but we could gather some, we can, we can get some additional information by talking to the general manager or perhaps council member Tablik who was at the meeting could, could answer that question better. I, I know the fund will help them um, better manage their monies. This is, a, I think it's a League of Minnesota fund, but it is, uh, has, um, uh, it's managed and uh, put out through League of Minnesota, as I believe, and I did talk to uh, Mr. Okins shortly after this meeting <coughs> about the fund, and, uh, and he was aware of it, and at one point the city did use it, but uh, we have managed to uh, move our investments other places where we were not using the fund at the current time, so. I guess if you have more concerns with it, you should probably talk to Charlene or the, or the city no, finance that, director. That was it. Thank you, Bruce. I was just, uh, it was something new to me, so I just thought I'd ask. And if it went through the commissioners, I trust them. And if they don't need any other any other authorization, I think that's fine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I move to approve uh, municipal utilities minutes. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Municipal Utilities Commission dated October 11th and 24th. Uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That carries. Uh, we'd like the community development meetings, our minutes pulled from the October 6th. Um, community activities, I'm sorry. Yeah, on September 27th, uh, I was reading through the review that they had at their strategic planning session for the council at the Wilmer Community Activity Center. And there were a few items in here, uh, if you had all reviewed it, but there's a few items in here on uh, participation with the mayor and the council and communications. And I'm just wondering if that has been done in the past or if there's something we're not, maybe not communicating with them. And I guess my concern is if there's something there that should be uh, shared with us, I'd like to find out what it is, if any of their concerns. And I just want to re refer that to the appropriate committee or to the city administrator, or maybe have uh, Leanne Freedom, uh, Freeman come on one of the committees and discuss some of their concerns with the uh, communication. What I feel uh, is a sense of some communication gap and on, uh, with the city council, the liaison with city administration for the city council representatives, and I'm not sure what they all are, but uh, clear direction from the city, diluted with school goals. Um, and there's some other concerns I had in there too that we can discuss at another time, but uh, I, I think they should be addressed. Um, yeah, I can, I can certainly meet with, uh, with the uh, community center director as well as the community ed and recreation director and talk about uh, talk about some of the items in this that were raised and see if there are some specifics and some specific remedies. I would appreciate that. Uh, that was my concern. Uh, unless there's any discussion, I move to file the minutes. Second. <coughs> Excuse me. A motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the community activity uh, minutes dated September 6th. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. And then uh, Mr. Dockin, uh, Councilman Dockin, if you'd like to pull the minutes of the Rice Hospital, you want to discuss that a little bit? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. just want to draw your attention to uh, the front page 
the front sheet of uh, the October 12th Rice Memorial Hospital uh, minutes and uh, drop down to the financial report by um, Bill Finsky, item number six, talks about the number of days of cash on hand. That has increased from a year ago when it was 71 days cash on hand to 116 today. So the financial management at the hospital uh, is doing quite well. You'll recall that I mentioned a month or two ago that, uh, and it was on the front page of the West Central Tribune, that $1.3 million this year so far has been written off on uncompensated care. So uh, kudos to Rice Memorial Hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Do I uh, have I would a move to file the minutes, Mr. Mayor? Second. second. A motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Rice Hospital from October 12th, 2011. Uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Um, we'll get into the uh, scheduled hearings. Uh, ordinance amending the rates charged by Eagle Lake Sanitary System. At this particular moment, I'd like to open that hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to that? If not, I'll close the hearing and open it up to the council. I would move to adopt, publish, and give it a number. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to adopt. Uh, the ordinance amending the rates charged to Eagle Lake Sanitary System and uh, give it a code and motion and uh, publish it. Uh, all those in favor? Whoops, that's the reason. No, that's the motion. Uh, it's a roll call. It's a motion. It is a roll call. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Roll call. Council Member Reese? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Almond? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. The motion carries. Did I close that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I? you did close the hearing. Uh, at this particular point, I'd like to open the uh, hearing at the currency exchange license application um, for uh, payday loans. Is there anyone here to discuss that? If not, I'll close the public hearing and open it up to the council. Any discussion? Councilman Christensen. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to approve the uh, license upon satisfa satisfactory testimony at the hearing. And it was not, so. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve the license upon satisfactory testimony at the hearing. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 And those opposed say no. That motion carries. And we have the same uh, licensing agreement for the Quick Funds Incorporated for a hearing. Um, at this particular moment, I would like to open that hearing. Is there anyone to speak to that? If not, we'll close the public hearing and give it to the council. I'd move to approve that. Second. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the licenses upon satisfactory testimony at the hearing. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. <coughs> that motion carries. And then we have a, a, a public hearing for the ordinance amending the municipal ordinance number 1060, the Wilmer zoning ordinance. Uh, is there someone here to speak to that? Bruce? Mayor Yanish, members of the council. This is the ordinance amendment that deals with the issues that have surfaced regarding mortgage underwriting standards. The property that's being proposed to be rezoned from R4 to R3 is a single family home and our R4 district does not allow single family homes. When the Planning Commission made some changes in the ordinance probably seven or eight years ago. The desire was to have higher density housing adjacent to the central business district. Since that time, uh, the planning commission has backed off a little bit just because of the mortgage situation. Uh, these are people that 
cannot get a mortgage for their single family home because our ordinance reads that if it's destroyed to 50% or more of its value, it cannot be rebuilt unless it's uh, conforming in all respects. In order to um, avoid that issue coming up again and to help this couple solve their mortgage issue, the Planning Commission has recommended that the property be rezoned to an R3 status, which means uh, you can still build up to a fourplex on the property, but a single family home is a permitted use in the R3 district. If we've ever got any developers that want to build um, a large complex adjacent to the downtown and they're able to assemble the package of real estate, the Planning Commission stands prepared to move forward with a rezoning back to the R4 at that time. In the absence of that, staff recommends that the ordinance rezoning this property be adopted, assigned a number, and published. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, we've got to close the uh, public hearing uh, and give it to the council. Is there any discussion with the council? Mr. Mayor, I'll... Uh, uh, recommend that the ordinance be adopted, assigned a number, and published. Second. The motion has been made and seconded that the uh, zoning from R4 to R3, the one lot that we're talking about, uh, let the ordinance be adapted, assigned a number, and published. Uh, all those in favor? Oh, just let's have some discussion if we have some. Cool. Okay. Roll call. Council Member Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. DeBleek. Aye. Reese. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. The motion carries. This time, uh, I did close that public hearing. Okay. <laughs> In the, at this particular time, we have the, uh, the open forum. Is anyone scheduled to speak? Nothing there? Okay. We'll move into the uh, Wilmer Housing and Redeve uh, Redevelopment Authority, Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, Small Cities Development Program, pre-application pre submission. Uh, Jill, would you like to speak to that? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank members you. Of the council. Uh, the HRA would like to ask your participation in submitting a new application to the Department of Deed for additional small cities development funding to be funded in the year 2012. We're just finishing up the 2009 project between Wilmer and Pennock, in which Wilmer was the grantee on behalf of the two communities. And that'll be complete by the end of December. And um, I believe there's information in your packet about that. And we'd like to know if you would like to apply again and be the grantee once again on behalf of Wilmer and the city of Raymond. And we'd like to do um, homeowner rehab again in Raymond and Wilmer on the southwest side of Wilmer, uh, commercial rehab and single family rental rehab this time around in the city of Wilmer on the southwest side. Okay. Does anyone have uh, questions for Jill? I would, uh, I would introduce the resolution. Second. We have a motion for a resolution to uh, uh, support the application uh, attached. For uh, is there any discussion, Councilman uh, Christensen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> it's rather quiet in the chambers tonight. Something seems amiss here. <laughs> um, thanks, Jill, uh, um, for bringing us to us, and I know. You're finishing up the 2009 one, and, and uh, you know I've been a, a critic of the HRA uh, in general for many years, uh, uh, mostly because it, it deals with a lot of public money. Mm -hmm. However, they've, uh, uh, I mean, some of these programs and grants have done wonderful things for Wilmer, uh, East Side Project, North Side Project, the, the downtown, the 2009 one with Pennock and Wilmer. Um, and, and I'm glad you're bringing us to us. But the uh, money comes from deed. Um, where does Deed get their money? From HUD. And HUD mm -hmm. gets their money from? 
from us. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make that clear that it is public dollars that are going into this. And uh, thanks again. Yeah. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Jill, thanks for coming. And you know, uh, kind of echoing what, what Ron said, but I took the tour that the HRA provided for elected officials. And the work that they've done with these grant dollars is amazing. It, it is truly incredible. Um, so this is a good thing. I certainly hope we get asked to apply because you've done some good work. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yep. This is a resolution. Councilmember Dawkins. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Duncan. Oh, uh, Joe, can you come back up for a moment, please? I'm sorry. I didn't recognize Councilman Duncan here. Thanks. Um, yeah, just a couple. I understand it's going to be owner-occupied housing rehabilitation and renter-occupied single-family rehabilitation. We've done this a couple of years in the past, and I'm wondering, I know that some of the houses aren't moving. Um, do you know why the ones that we have done, there's one on the street I live on, and I think that house has been vacant and has been rehabbed now for at least two years. Uh, this program is for persons, homeowners, that are living in their, in their home. Okay. So this is, um, maybe you're thinking of the one where we purchase and rehab and resell. Right. Is that the one? Yeah, that, that's some different funding. This is for the homeowners that um, want to do some rehab work and they have to stay in their home for 10 years in order for the grant to be forgiven. Otherwise, it has to be repaid if they move out. So for eight years, okay. Uh, and um, the other question I had was, uh, what sort of leverage do we have with respect to if we're going to use taxpayer money to do this for them to ensure that the houses are being maintained at a proper level. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that the HRA does inspections of homes, uh, whether they're rental or, or uh, owner owned, to ensure that the dollars that we've invested in those homes uh, are being taken care of? Uh, with the homeowner ones, no. We wouldn't go do any more inspections once we do a final inspection before we close on the loan. With the uh, rental units, it's possible we'll, we'll do inspections just because if it's a landlord that participates in the Section 8 program, we may get back there from time to time when there's Section 8 tenants living there. Um, but otherwise, if they don't participate in any programs that we work with, uh, we wouldn't get back there. Okay. And again, we're looking at $800,000. About how much of it will be for the homes and how much for the downtown, would you assume? Uh, well, this last time around, we used 300 and some, three, 400 and some thousand for the homeowners between the two communities, and the rest was for the downtown. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Joan. Any further questions or comments? Roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Aye. Common? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Fagerly? Aye. Dibley? Aye. Reese? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. This time we'll move into the uh, Public Works Safety Committee report for October 25th. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Project 814-D4 is our su southern interceptor, the force main an outfall from our new wastewater treatment facility to Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. Um, that project was done by SR Wiedema, and uh, they reached substantial completion in June of 2010, and since that time there's been a list of items that needed to be completed or corrected, and uh, they have notified the city that the work is uh, completed, including the lowering of the manholes. Donahue and Associates and city staff inspected the work and found it to be complete. So I would introduce a resolution to accept 814-D4, issue final payment to SR Wiedema in the amount of $61,561.25. Second. 
A motion has been made and seconded to accept the project number uh, 814D4 and issue the final payment to SR Lidema Incorporated in the amount of $61,561.25. Is there any discussion? A roll call. Council Member Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Publique? Aye. Reese? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. In May of 2010, the city received notification from an attorney that represents the Eagle Lake Sewer District, and they stated that they felt that the rate schedule that the city uh, was looking at was contradictory to the agreement that the city had with the Eagle Lake Sewer District. Discussion was held with various parties and attorneys to reach a settlement of $1.30 above the city's unmetered rate and omission of the administrative charge resulting in $40.73 a month for 2011 and $48.67 a month for 2012. A rate study is planned for 2012. The city's monitoring specific costs related to Eagle Lake Sewer District. The current agreement expires in 2016 and requires a two-year notification for termination. This was for information only. Um, in July of 2011, final payment was requested and approved by the city to Graham Construction for Project A12C, and since that time, the city has experienced some warranty issues with equipment provided by a supplier of one of the subcontractors. Correspondence been received from the supplier, Square D, stating that they are addressing the issues estimated at a cost of $80,000 through discussions with our city attorney and Donahue. It's recommended to withhold $10,000 for the final payment to Graham until the issue is resolved, noting that Graham or their subcontractor will be withholding payment from the supplier until the work is complete, and that's for information only. The city received the biannual agreement with the state of Minnesota for reimbursement of eligible costs the city incurs for maintaining and operating the airport during the 2012 and 2013 years. The agreement reimburses the city at a not to exceed figure of $41,636. I've introduced a resolution to approve the agreement with the state and authorize the mayor and city administrator to sign on behalf of the city. I'll second that, but wasn't the amount 51000 What did I say? 41. Oh, it's 51000 I'm sorry. Thank you. <coughs> that will be corrected. Uh, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the agreement with the state of Minnesota and authorize the mayor and the city administrator to sign on behalf of the city. <coughs> Are there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Councilman Daca. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, uh, draw the council's attention to the requirements that MnDOT has levied on us. It says you will be reimbursed for two-thirds of the eligible item costs up to the amount indicated in your grant agreement. Due to budget constraints, we are unable to redistribute the total available maintenance dollars for expansion projects that create more airport infrastructure. Please do not submit additional expenses once you have received 100% of your grant agreement dollars. Prior to any reimbursement being made by the state, the municipality must have a zoning authority established, and such authority must have adopted or be in the process of, ad of adopting airport zoning ordinance in accordance with the Minnesota statutes. Reimbursement may be denied entirely or in part if the airport is not properly maintained. It is particularly important during the winter and spring season or when hazardous conditions may exist to keep air traveling public informed of the status or condition of your airport. And I know we have the FBO that's uh, working uh, diligently out there, but uh, these are some fairly stiff requirements and uh, we need to stay on top of them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. <coughs> Any further discussion? Uh, we have a motion and a second, so uh, roll call. 
Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Donovan. Aye. Bagerly. Aye. Aye. Reed. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Um, Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. We had two uh, miscellaneous items, uh, and they're both for information. And well, the first one was in regards to our discussion on the trees on 35th Street Northwest. At that committee meeting, the staff informed the committee that the trees that were to be removed within the right of way have been marked, and removal was planned for the following week. I don't know, uh, they've probably been removed by now. Mm -hmm. They have been, yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, the other was uh, in regards to the uh, Flags of Honor lighting in the city was recently approached by Wayne Emberland uh, representing the VFW requesting permission to update the lighting at the Flags of Honor Memorial Park. Uh, the group is proposing to remove the 10 pole lights and replace them with floodlights mounted on 18 inch high concrete pedestals and to update the cabinet wiring at no cost to the city, the proposal was approved by the uh, Municipal Utilities and Public Works. The committee discussed the lighting project and it was suggested that the concern of light pollution be reviewed and this was, of course, for information only. Uh, that's the end of uh, the minutes, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move to file the minutes. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Public Works Safety Committee report for 1116. <coughs> I'm sorry, for Tuesday, October 25th, 2011. Um, any discussion? Councilman? I'd just like to add one thing that was not on our agenda, and uh, um, the City Council uh, not too long ago c uh, conducted a <coughs> survey that showed uh, police protection and and public safety within our city is the most valued benefit to the residents of Wilmer. Uh, we have a very first class, well trained, experienced police department, and recently I've received some letters and phone calls that indicated I should get a clue. <laughs> And then it would be stupid to disband the uh, Wilmer Police Department. And I guess I'm not stupid or clueless, but I don't think the disbanding of our police department is in the best interest of our city and the city's residents. And I'm not sure where the people that have contacted me about this have received their information, but uh, that this thing is even something that's being considered is, is uh, beyond me. It, it isn't being considered. And I, and I can't speak for the mayor or the rest of the city council, but I can assure the public that as a city council member and the chairman of public safety for the city of Wilmer, I don't feel that a drastic major such as disbanding our police department would even be um, a consideration worthy of discussion. What concerns me now is that now I'm getting phone calls from concerned or alarmed citizens. Uh, as to what in the world is going on and why is the city council considering such a move. And I, I, and I just wanted to make it very clear to the, to the residents within the city of Wilmer, uh, letters and phone calls can stop now. Um, and the residents of the city of Wilmer can be reassured that, I, I can reassure them for myself, City Council Member Doug Reese is not in favor of or even considering the possibility of disbanding our police department. So I, I, I just wanted to make that clear, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman, for making those comments. Uh, I do know where it came from. It was published in the newspaper under a letter for the, to the editor or something like that. But where did it come from before that? I'm not sure. Councilman Anderson. I, I can tell you where it came from. Where, you know, the Finance Committee, as we reviewed all of the budgets um, for the different departments, when we were talking with the police department, the question was raised, would it make sense to contract with the county? And we had a discussion about it. <coughs> no action, no recommendation, and, I, and that certainly I, I think for myself anyway, uh, the, uh, the police chief answered all the questions and it certainly wouldn't make sense 
from, again, from my perspective, to look at doing anything different than what we're doing right now. But that's where it came from. Thank you, Councilman. Chief, do you have anything to add as long as this is your department? Or <laughs> <laughs> Would a sigh of relief be appropriate? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'll I'll make sure I pass that message on to the uh, officers. I Thank you. In case they read it someplace, or... because of some of the some of the talk, and I think we also need to recognize that um, departments across the state have some of them have entered into that uh, type of negotiation. So I'm, I'm sure there is some apprehension there, but I will make sure they get the message. I would like to reassure the citizens again, like, like you did, Councilman Reese, is that uh, the mayor certainly doesn't have any intentions of doing anything like that, so we'll leave it up to the uh, council, but I think that the, uh, the council is probably in agreement with Councilman Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a comment. Um, you know, government in general, uh, including all the departments, is, is uh, uh, basically about ideas. People bring up ideas, uh, and, and government should run on ideas. Uh, there are good ideas and there are bad ideas. We talk about <laughs> ideas, and, and uh, this idea probably isn't a good idea presently. But don't pin it on people. Let's discuss the ideas. It's a bad idea, let's throw it out. Enough said. Thank you. With all this discussion, and I forgot where we were. So we, uh, Filing the minutes. Filing the minutes. A motion yeah. and a second was made. Okay. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, we'll get into the uh, Community Development Committee report for uh, September 29th. Councilman Dockin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, community Development meant October 27th. Uh, <laughs> Everyone from the committee was present, and uh, staff was present also. Mayor uh, Franny, Mayor Frank Yanish was there. Tim Johnson, Councilmember Johnson was there. Steve Rehnquist from the EDC, the director, and Dave Little from the West Central Tribune. Uh, item number one is public comments uh, for information only. Mayor Yanish reminded the committee that the Discover Manufacturing Showcase is scheduled for Friday. October 28, 2011 at Minwest Technology Campus. Local manufacturers will be featured highlighting the use of technology in their business. businesses. Uh, item number two was an EDC update and this was for information only. Steve Rehnquist, EDC director, presented an update of EDC projects and activities. Considerable time was spent discussing the renewable, re renewable ammonia development pro project. This project aims to create ammonia from ag biomass. Mr. Rehnquist reviewed EDC's goals for 2011 through 2015, including accomplishments to date, and there is an attachment on that also. The commission is operating with six main goal areas those being <coughs> to maintain and expand businesses, assist Rice Hospital in maintaining its position as a regional hospital, develop new opportunities for cooperation with smaller agencies, the commer commercialization of two renewable energy projects, and three value-added ag businesses and achieve a 50% increase in airport utilization. <coughs> Number three, uh, mobile home park update for information only. The committee reviewed an update on maintenance activities in the mobile home parks. And there's an attachment on that also, and I can read that if you'd like, Mr. Mayor. Staff noted that a local electrical contractor has signed a contract with Regency Mobile Home Parks to correct the deficiencies with their electrical systems. And Mr. Mayor, maybe we could have uh, Mr. Peterson expand on that a little bit. If you would. Mayor Yanish, members of the council. This item came about uh, as a cooperative effort between the city and the municipal utilities 
there were a number of <clears throat> obvious electrical code violations that existed at both parks. Some of the homes were illegally hooked up to the MEC system. Uh, some homes were connected, piggybacked off an adjacent home. There were light standards that were torn down and never had the power disconnected from them with uh, open uncapped wiring. The state electrical inspector came out and went through the parks with city staff and municipal utility staff and a number of violations were noted. Rather than cite them, cite the parks for those violations, uh, they had asked the park to get the work taken care of and the park is moving forward with, or the park management is having that done at both parks. They have contracted now with an electrician to uh, upgrade those systems and bring them to code. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, item number four is John Supper Club building update for information only. Staff presented a brief update on activities at the John Supper Club building. <coughs> Discuss the next steps in the rehabilitation process as it relates to achieving compliance with the December 31st, 2011 deadline. And I, I think it's important to notice that uh, the fire ch marshal, ha fire chief, has lifted the uh, do not, is it called a new, do not enter? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item number five, downtown planning for information only. Staff outlined a proposed process for a revised downtown development and redevelopment plan. This activity is proceeding as an, as an initiative of Mary Anish and is a cooperative effort between the City of Wilmer and the Wilmer Design Center. The process to create a new downtown plan begins December 6th with a community meeting. The public will be invited to offer comments regarding their vision for the future of downtown. Meetings will be held with targeted groups to solicit similar input. A plan will be drafted by the city and the design center staff in early January, and it is anticipated that a revised downtown plan could be ready for council adoption by late February or early March. Staff told the committee that they were very interested in obtaining public input in the process as the downtown doesn't belong to just one or two individuals or property owners. It is the citizens downtown. Mr. Mayor, did you wish to comment uh, on this? I would just like to comment. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, the fact that uh, the city and the design center are now working together. Uh, hopefully coming up with a plan that's acceptable to the public and to the uh, council. And uh, I would like to say that the city is more involved in other, uh, than ever. And if uh, our city administrator would like to say a couple words about it as well, because she's very involved in this. Sure, I think that um, as, as the mayor has, has stated, um, city staff, um, along with the mayor and myself, Bruce Peterson, have been working and having some meetings with the design center as well as um, the design center um, staff and, and volunteers as well as um, members of, as, as well as the EDC director to talk about how we can um, revisit and revise the downtown plan. And uh, particularly Bruce Peterson um, has been working um, along with the Design Center's plat uh, planner, um, Adam Arvidson, is that correct? Um, in developing kind of a process for public input that'll take us and, and give us an opportunity, I think, and the public an opportunity to uh, look at the plan that was done and the vision year and the plan that came out of that um, and update that plan as to where we are today, what has been accomplished, um, um, what might need to, you know, what is relevant today and have some discussion about what parts of the plan are still relevant today, what parts of the plan may need to change um, and gather some further public uh, input on it and public comment on it in a couple of different venues, a public meeting as well as some targeted meetings with um, downtown stakeholders. And then I think that'll come back and give an opportunity to have a, uh, some discussion about revising the plan um, and bringing that back, back, uh, back to the city council to review and consider and see if that plan can be moved forward and adopted as part of the city's comprehensive plan and 
and um, and discuss how that plan could be implemented over the next uh, over the next years. Thank you, Charlene. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the final uh, item number six, cornerstone contract, and this is a resolution. Staff explained to the committee that the FAA was requiring the city to weatherize the former airport hangar to prevent further deterioration. Staff received two quotes for the work. Due to the lateness of the season, some of the work has already been completed. Work being done under the contract includes pressure washing, caulking, and sealing windows and doors, sealing all penetrations, and applying two coats of an exterior waterproof paint. This FAA requirement is part of the pending land release memorandum of agreement. The low quote for the above work was submitted by Cornerstone Construction of Wilmer in the amount of $28,350. Staff added that quotes were being solicited for some roof repair as well, and that those quotes would fall well below the threshold required, requiring council review. It was a recommendation of staff that the committee approve the Cornerstone construction contract in the amount of $28,350. It was a motion and it was uh, seconded and passed for the following, and that is that the City Council approve the Cornerstone construction contract for maintenance of the former airport terminal in the amount of $28,350. This is a resolution, and I would make that resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the Cornerstone construction contract for maintenance of the former airport terminal in the amount of $28,350. A discussion. Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it seems redundant to stick and spend this money on that building uh, when, when sometime in the next 12 months, as we were told at the committee meeting, that this building could be and may be demolished. Uh, once again, this is public dollars. It, it's money from uh, our local option sales tax, so it, it's, it's regional money in, in, in effect. I don't know why the government operates this way, making us do this, spending money on that, and then possibly having this building uh, demolished within 12 months or, or 18 months, whatever the case may be. Uh, I, I don't know why we, why we do this. It, it, it just seems to be a waste of money. Can somebody answer that besides the fact of I know we want the land released, and to do that, they keep piling up on uh, us, uh, us uh, one thing after another. You have to do this, you have to do that. Uh, Mr. Peterson has spent three years sending letters back and forth to St. Paul to get something done out there, and we just keep uh, giving in and say, yeah, we'll do this, and they come back and say, well, now you have to do this, or now you have to do that. I, uh, I'm at a loss here. I mean, why does government operate this way? I, I just do not understand it, and, and uh, I know it has to be done to get the land released, but I think it's a waste of money. I personally do. Councilman Christensen, I, I believe that any one of us here would think that this is a waste of money. However, it's one of those things that do need to be done, and I, I think our city administrator, I'm going to call on her again because she did such a great job of explaining it this afternoon. I think um, I, I think you you are correct, uh, Councilmember Christensen and, and the mayor, that this is not something necessarily that um, uh, of, that we might otherwise uh, recommend uh, spending this on. But it is a requirement of getting the land released. It is a requirement that we the FAA has made very clear to us that we need to prevent further deterioration and erosion of that building. Um, and uh, whether that building is torn down in 12 to 18 months, I mean that that may or may not be the case. Um, we are committed to also trying to market that building for use. And uh, in order to market that building for use, again, we need to prevent any further erosion, uh, uh, for further erosion of its condition or deterioration of its, of its condition. And so it is indeed something that we, um, and we, we need to do and are required to do, and it is something that the FAA is asking us to do, and I would recommend um, that this contract be approved. Councilman Christians. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is this the last request? 
<laughs> we get this done, and they're going to say, boom, we, we release the land to you. Is, no, we are, are we guaranteed of that at all? We are not guaranteed. Um, that th this is not the last request. We have been working with the FAA, and we'll be bringing back, um, I think we have finalized at least a tentative memorandum of understanding for the council to, to, to discuss and, and have some input on, and I think that'll be coming to the next community development committee meeting. This is one of a number of requirements that the FAA is placing upon the city and a number of conditions that are being outlined. Um, with between the FAA and the city as to what it will take to secure the, the, the land release at the former airport site. And as I understand it, this is just a release for part, a partial release, is that right, Bruce? This is not the entire airport? It is a, well, go ahead, Bruce. The memorandum of agreement breaks the releases into three phases, and in order to have the first phase released, this is something that's required. Um, there are other requirements that will affect the release of the second and third phases. Um, most of it is tied to marketing and reaching consensus ultimately on how the historical nature of the terminal building is, is uh, dealt with. Uh, it has to do with some easements. Um, the Terminal building requires that the National Register application be submitted. That's just <coughs> completed. As Charlene mentioned, uh, we have to market the terminal building. We've prepared a marketing plan and submitted to the FAA and SHPO for their review. We have not heard back from them. Uh, they've had that about two to three weeks, I believe. Yeah, I was going to so, say two I mean, and a half weeks. We, so we continue to to operate in good faith with the FAA as we, as, as we continue to negotiate a memorandum of agreement that spells things out step by step. I'm losing my faith in the FAA, <laughs> I mean, as you can see. <laughs> I, I so, can so understand those concerns. So phase one is going to release which part of the land out there? The, the, the part that we've got the industrial park in or something else? Phase one will release the portion of the airport that's platted that is on the east side of the new county road five with the exception of the terminal property that's under discussion uh, with regard to its historical significance phase two would release everything that would be between the new power line and county road five as well as some property along wilmer avenue that would allow for the uh, 2012 projects including the Western Interceptor, the Industrial Park Infrastructure, and the Wilmer Avenue uh, relocation and new BNSF crossing. And those are the primary ones that we're worried about, phases one and two. Phase, phase three, three will come about. Phase three is everything except those, everything to the west, about another 300 acres. And right now, that's just under ag leases. We don't have any current plans to use that property. In fact, it's uh, some of the property that the committee had discussed a year ago about trying to dispose of by auction because of the uh, favorable agriculture real estate market. And the, hopefully, where, we where, won't miss where does out the on terminal, that. Where does the terminal building fit in? What phase? Or is uh, that by the itself? terminal building would be in phase three, so that property. But we, there are certain things that we have to do before they will release that. We're, we're fortunate, I think, in convincing them that we should be able to get partial releases. They had been adamantly opposed to that before, and they said there was no provision in federal law to do that. They came back and said, oh, I guess there is. Um, here's what we're going to have to do, or here's what the city has to do in order to get those phases. So I think we've made some progress, but um, it's extremely frustrating, and I, too, share your concerns about the the cost of making these things happen. So if we can get phase one and two released, why don't we just give them the airport and say, hey, you guys take it. It's yours. We don't need it. Uh, Is that there's, there's money to be made from the sale of that property, and I do not wish the federal government to have that <laughs> income. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor? Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I choose to look on a positive side. I believe that it will be marketed and I think it will be sold. And uh, let's hope that that's what happens. Uh, I think John L. Rice and his family are pioneer aviators and I do in fact believe 
that it is a historical uh, building and uh, it's something worthwhile to save and I'm hoping we have a good marketing organization and I think that uh, there is a reason to believe that uh, it could be sold. Thank and that's about 4.5 acres, the sale. <clears throat> the terminal site is about 4.5 acres. They have actually expanded the what they call the area of potential effect for historical purposes to be somewhere between 11 and 13 acres. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Um, if I may, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. just one other comment. Sure. No. We may end up marketing, I think, in 2020. It may not be 12, 13, 14, 15. I mean, I, I, I'm losing faith in those people. That's why my comments were, uh, I, think, I think, appropriate. Uh, I, I agree, Jim. It'd be, it'd be nice to market, and the same with Bruce. There's money to be made on it. It may be 2020. It may not be next year, the year after. They're, they have shown us no guarantees, absolutely zero, zero guarantees. If you do this, we'll do that. If you do that, we'll do that. So, final comment. Thank you, Councilman. I can appreciate your uh, frustrations. I will say this is that we are further probably now than we ever have been. Uh, and it's, uh, it's looking like uh, the first phase could possibly be released by the end of the year. And that's what we're hoping for anyway. We have Mayor, motion. unless there are f further comments or further business to... We have, uh, I think we need to vote, on the, vote on, that on the resolution. Oh, excuse me. A motion and a second, but not a vote. Roll call. Aye. Aye. Bagerly. Aye. DeBleek. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. No. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Seven ayes, one no. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, unless there are, is further business to come before, I would move that uh, we file these minutes. Second. A motion has been made and seconded that we file the minutes of the Community Development Committee of uh, Thursday, October 27th. Uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Labor Relations Committee reports for October 20th and November 2nd. Uh, Councilman Amon. Thank you. Item number one, uh, we had uh, public comments and nobody spoke. <coughs> Item number two on the agenda was consideration of the bill and maintenance supervisor position. This is for information only. Uh, our city administrator, Stevens, presented the uh, committee with additional information regarding the proposed position of a building maintenance supervisor. Ms. Stevens explained that the city has 10 buildings with a total of 65,000 square feet of which eight are maintained by the custodial staff. Ms. Stevens further explained that previously the city had custodial staff providing 160 hours of maintenance, which has now been reduced to 80 hours with the current vacancy. Ms. Stevens noted that 120 hours of custodial time is necessary to adequately maintain the facility and requested that the committee consider authorizing staff to fill the current vacancy with a grade six building super maintenance supervisor position. Ms. Stevens explained that the position would perform all custodial services with primary responsibility for the airport, community center, public works, custodial services, uh, with primary responsibility for, the, for those, as well as serve as a project manager for all uh, preventive maintenance and uh, major repair projects such as roofs, HVAC for all the facilities, as well as managing the daily custodial schedules. Um, Council Member Johnson asked for clarification on the duties and skill levels of the grade three and grade four custodial positions. Council Member Anderson asked if the boiler license was necessary and I asked, the suggestion that uh, the work could perhaps be performed by contract employees or part-time employees. Public Works Director Wilson reviewed the efforts of the city to, to previously contract out for custodial services. City Administrator, uh, Stevens expressed concerns that the filling that filling the position of the grade one level would not provide uh, applicants with the skills necessary, and stated that the need is really for three for three custodial positions. Uh, Councilman Anderson made a motion and seconded 
I uh, was seconded to authorize the filling of the custodial <coughs> position at a grade level of three. And the motion failed on a two to two vote. Uh, I suggested and asked the staff return with more information regarding contracting out of custodial services as well as additional information on the custodial grade three position. This matter was for information only. Uh, item number three was the succession planning discussion. Uh, Ms. Stevens uh, stated that this uh, item was placed on the agenda at the request of Council Member Reese uh, and explained that the city staff had spent some time on workforce planning in 2007 and 2008 and that information was provided to the committee. Council Member Reese indicated that this was an area of concern that the city based upon the possibility of staff in critical position being retirement eligible in the next three to five years. The committee members uh, present did concur. Uh, Councilman Anderson stated that the effort should be an ongoing, should be ongoing in identifying critical positions and opportunities for developing staff, as well as the importance of the knowledge transfer from retiring employees to continuing employees. Council member asked Ms. Stevens to continue the workforce planning efforts and update the committee as necessary, and this matter was for information only. Uh, item number four was consideration of the amendment to the personnel policy regarding credit cards. <coughs> Ms. Stevens presented the amendment to the city's personnel policy regarding credit cards, stating that the city had an existing policy for credit cards in section 2.27 but that as online payment and credit card purchasing has become more prevalent, there was need to update the policy uh, to reflect new practices. Ms. Stevens stated that the limit on amounts of transactions have not changed and that responsibility and accountability still rests with the department heads and the city administrator. A motion was made and seconded to approve the amendment to the city's personnel policy, section 2.27, regarding the use of credit cards and the motion carried. Um, do we have to remove that we as, as yes, a motion? Need a, need I would uh, that. move that motion, Mr. Mayor, that we approve the, the policy. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, personnel policy section 2.27 regarding the use of credit cards. Uh, that is a motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Um, item number five was we close the meeting to discuss contract negotiations. It was for information only. Motion was made in the second to close the meeting to discuss strategy. And uh, at 6.20 p.m. Um, there was a motion made and seconded to reopen the meeting. Um, Item number six was consideration of labor contracts, and there are no contracts or contracts for consideration. Item number seven was Ms. Laney. Uh, Ms. Stevens informed the committee that the city had received notice from the Minnesota Office of Budget and Management that it had failed to pay equity compliance test. Ms. Stevens stated that the city was working with Springstead Incorporated to resubmit the report. I also raised the possibility of forming intergovernmental agreements to improve communications between the city, Rice Hospital, and the Municipal Utilities Commission. Um, being there are no further business, uh, we adjourned at 625. I would also like to note that we had a Labor Relations Committee uh, October 20th in the previous packet. Uh, <coughs> The information there was uh, item number one, as we announced, it was the intent to uh, of the committee to close the meeting to discuss employment contract negoti negotiations with the city bargaining groups. And the motion was moved to close the meeting and seconded, which carried. At 5.40, we reopened the meeting, and uh, which carried. And being there no further business, we moved to adjourn. And with that, that concludes the minutes of the Labor Relations Committee, and I'll move to uh, file the minutes, Mr. Mayor. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the uh, Labor Committee for the October 20th and November 2nd meetings. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Discussion. I'm sorry, discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
uh, a question on the pay equity compliance test. I know we went through this before several years ago and passed it, and evidently we've passed for three, four, five, six years. Um, another government stepping in, telling us what to do, when to do, and how to do it. How long do we have to come into compliance with this, and, and what are the penalties if we don't? Are they going to close when we're down? Um, there, there are penalties if we do not come into compliance. Uh, those, can, those can include fines that can date back from the first of the year. Um, they also could in, um, could in the past, I think the, the penalties also could have included um, withholding of local government aid. Uh, at this point, um, we are asking, you know, we're, we're working with Spring State Incorporated. Their, their recommendation was to resubmit the report, so we are resubmitting the report. We are updating the information that, that we have, as well as asking Rice Hospital and the MUC to update the information, and we will resubmit it and ask for another determination. Um, that, determina that period of time can take up to 12 months, is my understanding. Um, but again, at, if at that point we still are out of compliance, um, it would require us to make um, adjustments in our pay plan to come into a compliance. And where we failed, the, the compliance test that we failed was um, on the um, years to maximum for female physicians or, uh, versus male physicians. Is this state or federal mandate? It is the state of Minnesota. State mandate. So, so the, the holding LGA is one of their options, withholding it. Yes. So. I understand most of it, but maybe the public should be, uh, maybe you could explain it in just layman's terms in two minutes, tell the public what's going on, what we have to do as far as pay equity. Um, again, pay equity is a requirement of the state of the Minnesota, um, and they look at the various pay ranges and the um, years it takes for an employee in, an, in, a, in, a pay in a stated pay range to get from minimum to maximum. And um, whether those are female positions, male positions, is how they uh, how they look at those. Uh, and then I think the um, um, Audrey may have the answer to this. I think we are we 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 do not submit this annually. It's every other year, or it is okay. annually. every three years is the is the requirement and such. And so in the past, we have been in compliance. Um, in in this most recent um, submission that was done last year. Uh, the city was not in, was uh, not in compliance, and we received that notification of non-compliance uh, just in the last month. Um, and some of that delay in receiving that may have been due to the state's uh, shutdown. Um, and again, um, the options are to resubmit it, which is what we are, are working to do, is to update information, see if any of our information, anything has changed. I mean, we have had some changes in, in personnel that may change the outcome of it. Um, and that will be reevaluated again if we are received notice that we are still not in compliance. Um, then we will have to look at what the options are to, to bring physicians into compliance and such. And I think that that compliance, again, it could affect not just the city of Wilmer, but because it is the city of Wilmer, that Rice Hospital and the MUC are included in our pay equity reports as well because they're municipally owned. So they are included as part of the pay equity and have been for a number of years. The city in the past, um, my understanding is the city in the past did attempt to try to separate the uh, three entities um, and that was not, that was we were not able to do that. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, uh, file the minutes, say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. We'll go to the Finance Committee report for October 31st. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We met on Halloween evening. Uh, we didn't have anybody in costume. The first item was uh, public comment, and there was no one there to, to speak to us. Second item is the EDC 2012 proposed budget. Steve Rehnquist, the EDC director, reviewed the uh, 2012 EDC budget with us. Mr. Rehnquist noted that the 2012 revenue includes $455,000 from the county tax levy, and this is the same amount that it's been for four years. So there was no increase in their levy. The EDC is also proposing to utilize $53,508 from their reserves as a funding source. The overall budgeted expenditures for 2012 totals $508,000 $508,508 and includes the recently formalized full-time position of an ag specialist who is going to have an office in the Midwest campus. Uh, concerns were raised regarding the 
uh, increase reflected in the executive director and assistant director salaries. But Mr. Rehnquist stated that any salary increases for the EDC will be by blended rate approved by the city and the county in their salary increases. Following discussion, there was a motion made, seconded, and passed, and I would <coughs> move the recommendation of the committee to approve the EDC 2012 budget as presented. Second. Opposed. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the, uh, the uh, EDC 2012 budget as proposed. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Following the budget discussion, Mr. Rehnquist spent considerable time uh, reviewing with us projects uh, that the EDC had been involved with, as well as some statistics showing the economic uh, improvement uh, attributable to the EDC uh, in Candioy County. The third item uh, has to do with the 2011 uh, assessment roll. Clerk Halliday informed us that the 2011 assessment roll approved by the council earlier this year includes two properties that belong to the HRA. These properties are located on Becker Avenue, that's the Highland Apartments, and on Gorton Avenue. It was discovered that the cooperative agreements with the HRA dated <coughs> November 3rd, 1993 and October 17th, 1979 respectively, state that a condition of their public housing projects was that the city would not levy special assessments against their respective properties for any city improvement projects. Council Member Fagerly asked if there was an end date to the uh, cooperation agreements and we had asked that the city attorney review that. Before we move further, I'm wondering if we have an answer to that. Mr. Mayor and Council, I did review that. The Both agreements are still in effect and will continue in effect indefinitely. So the action taken by the committee was appropriate. Thank you, Rich. So that said, following discussion, there was a motion made, seconded, and passed. And I would introduce a resolution removing parcels 95-009-1270 and 95-310-0150 from the assessment uh, roll. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce resolution removing parcels 95-009-1270 and 95-310-0150 from the assessment roll subject to the city attorney's review. Uh, discussion? Councilman Pagley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is for Rich. We can't assess them, but they're supposed to pay a payment in lieu of taxes then, right? For the taxes and the assessment. That's correct. The agreement, each agreement does provide for a payment in lieu to cover a part of real estate taxes and a part of assessments. Okay, and the payment in lieu of taxes just goes to the city. It's not to the county or school district. No, the money that, the, that would be paid does get allocated to the, all three taxing authorities. Okay, so how, how do we assess them then for their payment in lieu of taxes for the street project then? It, it, there is it? no separate assessment for that. It's just the payment in lieu is considered to cover those types of things or be a contribution towards those types of expenses. So who figures the amount that they have to pay then? I think it's by agreement, and I don't know, I didn't ask Kevin, you know, what that currently is at, but I think it's by agreement. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Councilman Um yeah, On the same line, uh, Mr. Councilman Fagerly and the Mayor and Council, this issue I brought and mentioned up to a few, a few times before in the last few years, and that's my concern of ongoing construction projects in the city and the continual expense that we're exposed to. And this isn't the first time where we've uh, uh, passed a, a resolution or about to and we found out that we have housing and redevelopment authority properties and we can't levy taxes or the improvements against that property due to the agreement. Um, that's an expense to all taxpayers. So 
you know every citizen who pays taxes is actually else also helping support the infrastructure on those homes since they're located in the city of limits uh, city limits and I I think it's an unfair way of unfair way of really uh, burdening the taxpayers but needless to say we need to provide proper housing for people also so it's a philosophical issue but what I don't agree with is is the uh, why we're informed of this so late prior to these assessment rolls you would think we'd have the information in front of us this has happened time and time again that oh all of a sudden we have some HRA homes here we're not going to be able to levy that means an, uh, an additional expense uh, on the project to the city of Wilmer taxpayers um, my concern is that it, as we go through the list of apartments that the city of Wilmer and the HRA owns and maintains and provides uh, housing for people, and not, not trying to diss them, is that there's an expense that all of the people are paying for that. It's a service we're providing as taxpayers to other people in the community. I would somehow like to see that money, I mean, I'm sure, uh, Rick, you're on the same uh, the same wavelength there, trying to see if there is a way that we can maybe have them pay for a larger share or a, a share of the uh, uh, street assessment project. And I think that's long overdue. Uh, I think it's a way to stop and reinvent um, how we should be dispersing uh, our funds throughout the community, wants versus needs. and. Uh, I'm, I hope it goes back to the right appropriate committee for more discussion and, and evaluation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Charlene, would that be uh, an item for uh, our finance director to um, address? I think it would be an item for, um, yeah, uh, you know, for, um, as, far, as far as the process, um, I, I, can, I understand the concerns that, uh, that Councilmember Amin has raised about the processes that we probably should be aware that these homes are on these, um, are on these streets and such in, in advance and we can uh, look at that and look at that process and, and try to understand why um, it came up at this time and not earlier. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, policy, a policy change would really be by the Finance Committee at this point and go back to finance for discussion. Thank you, Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, trying to figure out what we're doing here. I, I know we're removing them from the assessment roll, but they've been on the assessment roll all this time and, and uh, haven't been paying them. I mean, how's that been handled? No, it is for these street projects. I mean, the, the assessment was, was due to the projects that were done on these streets, and then these properties are on those streets. And so, um, oh yeah, it was, a, it was, uh, it came to our attention as part of the, pr as for the project when the HRE raised us that they actually cannot be assessed for those profit, for those, for that project. So what was, f just for the street project? Yes. Yeah. Just the for the street project. Okay, I, I didn't understand yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if that was not clear. It is for, it is for the street project and the street improvements that were made. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Council Member Fackerly. Aye. Dupuy. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christians. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Okay, now we got some more that we're going to work on. This is the Senior Disabled Citizens uh, Assessment Deferment. Uh, Clerk Calde reported that according to Minnesota statutes, the city can defer special assessments placed against homestead properties for seniors, disabled, or military persons meeting certain income guidelines. There are five owners in the city's 2011 project number 1101 that have requested and qualified for the deferment. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I would introduce a resolution deferring the special assessments for the five parcels discussed above in Project 1101. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution deferring the special assessments for the five parcels discussed above or discussed in Project 1101. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember DeBlake. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Begley. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Uh, there's also one owner in the city's 2011 project 1112 that has requested and qualified for deferment. 
The following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I would introduce a resolution deferring the special assessments for one parcel as discussed above in Project 1112. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution deferring the special assessments for one parcel discussed in Project 1112. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dakin. Aye. Beggarly. Aye. Bleak. Aye. Eight ayes, zero notes. That motion carries. We have an agricultural exemption uh, for special, uh, special assessments. Clerk Halliday presented a list of property owners who have made application for agricultural land exemptions and have met the criteria in the city's assessment policy. The assessment policy allows the city to temporarily exempt certain lands currently used for agricultural purposes. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed and I would introduce a resolution authorizing the agricultural exemption of special assessments on the parcels discussed above. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution authorizing the agricultural exemptions of special assessments on the parcels discussed. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Beggarly. Aye. Bleak. Aye. Reese. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. And that motion carries. The next item was a discussion on Ridgewater College agricultural exemption. Clerk Allen explained that a parcel currently being used for farming, which has qualified for agricultural exemption, might be utilized by Ridgewater College for students in their agricultural program. Consequently, the use of this parcel may be changing from agricultural use to educational use for agricultural purposes. The council needs to determine whether this property would still qualify for the agricultural exemption if that transfer occurred. But it was also noted that the special assessment against this property may be written off in 2012 because the end of the 40 year life uh, of the improvement. Further future discussions by the council should address land classifications in the city's assessment policy. And we had a long discussion about that and we'll see that come back to us. Uh, this was for information only. The next item was Sunrise Park Tax Forfeited Land. Clerk Halliday stated that earlier this year the council had approved and approved the appraised value set by the county on a small parcel of land in Sunrise Edition, which had become tax forfeited and is adjacent to a city-owned lot. It had been negotiated with Candioi County for the city to purchase it for one dollar, but it was discovered that under those circumstances, the Commissioner of Revenue requires a fee of $250 for the conditional use deed. Subsequently, it was being recommended that the city purchase the land outright for the appraised value of $200, which would alleviate the, sta the state's $250 requirement. <laughs> Following discussion, uh, there was a motion made seconded and passed, and I would move the recommendation of the committee to remit uh, the proposal to the Planning Commission with a recommendation to purchase the parcel for the appraised value of $200. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to remit the proposal to the Planning Commission with a recommendation to purchase the parcel for the appraised value of $200. And that would be just a motion? Uh, all those in, uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. The next item has to do with funds for a rain <coughs> garden. Uh, staff reported that a rain garden had been installed uh, in the amount of $4,515.40. This is at First Street and LI Avenue North, and it had been recommended uh, to be done by the Stormwater Task Force. It's being requested that funding for the project be appropriated from the Stormwater Fund. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I would move the recommendation uh, in a <coughs> resolution appropriating $4,516 from the Stormwater Fund for the rain garden at First Street and LI Avenue North. Second. 
The motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution appropriating $4,516 from the stormwater fund for the rain garden at First Street and Ella Avenue North. Uh, discussion. Roll call. Councilmember Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. DeBleek. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. The next item has to do with improvements to Robbins Island Shelter and the Hilltop Skating Rink. Staff reported to us that improvements are needed at the Lions Shelter at Robbins Island in the amount of $2,000 and new lighting is needed at Hilltop Skating uh, Park Skating Rink in the amount of $5,000. In the 2011 Capital Outlay Program, Public Works had budgeted $10,000 for shelter repair. It was their request that $2,000 of this amount be transferred to the Public Works operating budget to fund the improvement at the Lions Shelter since they are maintenance issues and not capital. Uh, it's also being requested that $5,000 of the shelter repair in the Public Works capital outlay be redesignated to Hilltop Park Skating Rink lighting. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I would introduce a resolution transferring $2,000 from shelter repair in the 2011 Public Works capital outlay program to the Public Works operating budget for the Lion Shelter improvements and redesignating 2011 Public Works capital outlay funds of $5,000 for the uh, shelter repair at Hilltop Park Skating Rink Lighting. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution transferring $2,000 from the shelter repair in the 2011 Public Works capital outlay program to the Public Works operating budget for the Lion Shelter improvements and redesignating 2011 Public Works capital outlay funds of $5,000 from shelter repair to Hilltop Park Skating Rink Lighting. Discussion? Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the committee members I know at the, at the meeting asked if the Lions Club would have any interest in helping Defer, uh, on some of those expenses, and I'm wondering if we've had a chance to talk to representatives of the Lions Club. Um, I was not aware that that request had been made, and so I did not contact the Lions Club. I can certainly do so. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Daffin. Aye. Beggarly. Aye. Bleak. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Next one, we are reappropriating some uh, funds for the city office building repairs. Um, staff explained that the 2011 City Hall capital outlay budget includes $25,371 for roof repairs. However, quotes received are exceeding this amount. Under the 2011 Public Works capital outlay budget, a loader has been purchased, it's a used loader has been purchased for $160,000, which leaves $35,000 available for additional funding needed to replace the entire roof at City Hall. It's being requested that the council reappropriate the excess $35,000 from the loader purchase to roof repair. Following discussion, there was a motion made seconded and passed. And I would introduce a resolution reappropriating $35,000 from the 2011 Public Works Capital Outlay Budget for the loader to the City Hall Capital Outlay Budget for roof replacement. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution reappropriating $35,000 from the 2011 Public Works Capital Outlay Budget for the loader to the City Hall Capital Outlay Budget for roof replacement. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. DeBleek. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. The next item was some discussion in the 2012 mayor's proposed budget. Uh, staff reported that Administrator Stevens has proposed that as a result of the council work session that we recently held, 
that the airport FBO contract amount that was not included in the initial 2012 mayor's proposed budget be added back, <coughs> and that the request from Let's Go Fishing, re fishing recently uh, presented to the council not be included in the 2012 budget. It was a consensus of the committee that both uh, entities be notified of these proposals. That was for information only. And, and I would just, just ask one more time, um, on Let's Go Fishing, is there an interest on the part of the council to do anything? The, the, the Finance Committee, I think, was pretty much um, fine leaving it out with the exception of the chairman. But if there's... Hmm? And who would that be? That'd be me. <laughs> but if there's no, no, no interest, then we'll just leave it as it is. Councilman Anderson, I would ask that someone that was not at your committee meeting would would respond. Well, I, I share some of the same sentiments, but however, where are you going to find the money? And I, uh, um, I think Let's the, Go Fishing is, is a great organization, does uh, great good in all the communities that they serve. But I, I just don't know where you're going to find the money. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman, but I believe the question was, was there an interest in it? Yes. You know, so it should not be dropped is what you're saying? No, it, it will be dropped unless I hear overwhelming interest in, in doing it. It will be dropped, will not be funded in any manner in the 2012 budget. Councilman DeBlake? Yeah, I too, um, no, I think it's a fine and great organization. They do a lot of a lot of good, take a, a lot of people or get a lot of seniors out uh, and give them an outdoor experience um, that they may or may not have in their lives. But um, I think under the tight budget constraints, I don't think we can consider um, funding this type of uh, organization right now. I think we have our answer on that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. So that was for information only. Uh, the next item were some reports. Uh, that we re received the September 30th, 2011 reports for the CVB, Rack 8, local option sales tax, third quarter rice trust, third quarter interest and dividends, third quarter investment activity and cash investment portfolio. That was information only. Uh, final item uh, under miscellany, Council Member Fagerly raised the issue of funding for an additional microphone for staff use during council meetings, as it is cumbersome to see these folks passing it back and forth. Uh, Clerk Halliday uh, responded that an additional microphone may not be possible because, be possible because there are limited connections uh, here in the auditorium. We took it for information only, and I guess I would just ask, have we been able to resolve that at all? Um, I don't think Clerk Halliday has had a chance to do that. He is on vacation this week. I'll, when he okay. returns we'll from look, vacation, we'll take a look at that. We'll look for some fo follow-up on that later. Unless there's questions, I would need to file these minutes. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Finance Committee report for October 31st, 2011. Discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, with that, we'll go into the uh, consideration of the preliminary plat for Evans edition. Bruce, would you like to bring us up to date on that? Evans edition is a subdivision of an existing large parcel in two lots. There is an existing home on the site that would be maintained on one of the existing lot, on one of the newly created lots. The utilities has requested that an easement be added and the planning commission approve the planning, the preliminary plat with the addition of that easement. It's a recommendation of staff that the council approve the preliminary plat and we would expect to come back with a final plat in two to four weeks. Move to approve. Second. So motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve the preliminary plot for the Evans edition. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Um, did I skip one? Yes. Mm -hmm. 14. 
consideration of an ordinance to rezone certain lands from R2 to limited business. Uh, Bruce, maybe you'd want to discuss that too. Certainly, uh, Mayor Yannick, members of the council. The city received a request from Brenda Hubers to rezone property that lies just west of the Independence Place driveway on Wilmer Avenue. Uh, it's a one acre tract of land that consists of a pretty good sized single family home as well as a large outbuilding. It is the intention of Mrs. Hubers to operate a counseling center out of the existing residence. The proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan and has been approved by the Planning Commission. It's a recommendation of staff that the ordinance be introduced for a public hearing to be held November 21st, 2011. Move to approve. Second. Is that just a plain motion? The motion has been made and seconded to uh, introduce an ordinance for a public hearing on November 21st, 2011. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. I guess we're to the uh, announcements of council meetings uh, or committee meetings. Uh, public Works. Public Works Safety, Tuesday, November 15th, 4.45. In uh, Community Development. Uh, November 17th, 445. November 17th, 445. And the labor relations? No meeting scheduled today. No meeting scheduled. And the finance committee? Finance will meet Monday, the 14th at 445. And I would just remind council members, if you have questions on the budget, please get those to staff so that we can talk about them. Would that be here? No, that's at City Hall. The meeting on the 14th is at City Hall. 14th. The meeting on the 28th would be here. Right. The meeting on the 28th is here. Yep. Yep. The okay. meeting on the 14th will be at City Hall. Okay. With that in mind, I, uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mayor? Mayor? Yes. I had one uh, added item. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Laney. Yep. Yes, thank you. Um, it has to do with Mr. Church and Associates. I know he's con under contract to the city through this year, uh, and we got a uh, um, update from him basically um, in our uh, weekly memo. Uh, I'm just wondering, what are they? Are they doing anything for the city? And we're paying them, you know, is it twenty-seven thousand dollars our share of it? Is that what it is? Yes. That's right. Uh, are they doing anything for the city? And in his update here, it's basically what's going on in Washington, and he says nothing about Minnesota or the city of Wilmer. Uh, do we know if they're working on anything? I don't. <laughs> I will say this, is that the uh, the church contract has been cut for the 2012 budget. I understand that, but, uh, but we're still paying him for something. I, and, and, and I can follow up with Church Associates and, and get some additional information for you. Those th They typically do send out that update to us as a part of their service, but um, I can follow up with them on any additional and what work they have done. And, and, and maybe when you're doing that, you can ask the utilities if they're they're under contract, if they're if he's doing anything for them. I, I can certainly talk with uh, Bruce Gom, the general manager of the utilities. I know in the past, um, Bruce Gom has felt from the, from the utility perspective, it has been a worthwhile contract for them. But I can I can talk to Bruce again about what what the help they've had or what they've provided them in this past year. Okay, that would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. Move to no, I'm sorry, we got some more miscellany over here. Thank you, uh, Councilman Uh Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to uh, um, indicate that this. Friday is Veterans Day. There are many uh, different types of uh, observances that are happening. I'm sure the Legion will have an activity on Veterans Day. Um, just wanted to make that announcement. Thank you very much. Councilman Um uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to request uh, the Chief of Police. I understand the um, October 29th, 30th weekend was very uh, a lot of activity in the police department. wonder if you could give a report to the Public Works Committee on the 15th 
about the activities on that weekend? Um, actually, start. Is this on? Sergeant Anderson is here. Uh, he actually worked that night. He could probably give you a more detailed account. Um, Mayor Yanish also rode that night, um, Saturday night, and and was present. Um, essentially, the things that are uh, noteworthy to the community is we did have a. It's not a drive-by shooting. We had a shooting at a vehicle out in Regency West Park uh, trailer park, and. Um, we are not getting a lot of cooperation from the victims. We have some idea who might be responsible. We are still working the case, but um, like I say, we're running into some difficulty there from both sides that uh, we believe are involved in that shooting. Um, we're busy with a lot of other types of calls that we normally face, but that was probably the, the uh, more major call of that evening. Was there a specifically something else that you had heard that, that I could enlighten you with? No, just that in general, and I want you to elaborate a little bit. Did you, a little Sergeant little Anderson, what I think you say? asked for a, did you want more information at the next com public Yeah, if you committee? want to bring it to the next committee meeting as far as what some of the staffing levels were and I, some of those I issues. Can. Sergeant well. Anderson's yeah. here now if you, if you want to speak specifically to those two nights. Why don't you come on up? <coughs> Thank you, Sergeant Anderson. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Did you have a question for the sergeant? Yeah, uh, Sergeant, uh, I know the um, paper made reference to probably the fact there was not enough officers or you didn't have enough people on staff to actually answer all the calls that evening. Is yeah. that in effect the, the case or was there other it was the actors. We had a really heavy call load that night, starting at about seven o'clock until um, I actually ended up working a little bit late. Um, my shift was done at six a.m., and we we're still getting calls of fights at that time. Um, we did run short, and um, a particular call had to be um, put off. We had no city units available. We didn't have any county deputies available um, either. So uh, one call in particular, which was a burglary. Um, they had to wait because we had no bodies to send them. Um, that typically is not the case, and uh, we don't generally like to make the public wait for those kinds of things, but we just didn't have the manpower, the bodies, to, to send anybody it, to that particular call. If I could interject on, on that particular one, I, now I, I realize what your concern is. Um, I forgot about that specific incident. Uh, Sergeant Anser Anderson made the call that night, and I think he made it appropriately. Um, they were tied up on a shooting call, which we know there's guns involved, and, and that is a uh, definite direct threat to life. Uh, the burglary call was someone who surprised a burglar in their place. It was a property crime. Uh, the burglar took off right away. There was no threat to the victim. By the time we would have made it to the residence, um, that victim was no longer, it would have just been take a report and, and build off the case from there. So in that case, they elected to stay with the shooting call instead of respond to the burglary call. So I th kind of think that the burglary was misrepresented in the paper. It made it sound like we A, either didn't care or didn't respond. That is not the case. It was just the fact that officers and the county were tied up at the uh, West Side Trailer Park, and we uh, did a direct attention to that call as soon as we were able to. But in view of the circumstances of what was going on in one area of town versus what was going on in the other area of town, and there was no direct threat to that individual, um, we did not get there right away. Uh, if I may interject, uh, I, I think the, uh, the the key word there is right away because you did get there, I, I understand. We did. Once the officer was dispatched the call, I looked at the actual dispatch time and, and the time that they arrived. There was a five minute time delay, but um, you know, the burglar's long gone by then, so um, it, it is what it is. I apologize for us not being there faster, but we did the best we could. Okay. Uh, and, and some of the, I know some of the concerns, the way I read it, uh, was reported or the way I interpreted it in the paper was that, you know, that we was a long time period and there was not a, um, no officer to respond over a long time period, and that's and that's why that 
that individual is able to um, evade capture, I guess. But thanks for the clarifications. You're welcome. Thank you. Councilman Dye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not on this subject, but on uh, another police-related subject. Just want to uh, make the public aware that they are missing uh, great cops meetings that we have in Wilmer at the fire department. And uh, last week, uh, Sergeant Osmus and uh, Officer Schneider and Livingood, who are school liaison officers, and have worked the D.A.R.E. program now in the 5th and 7th and now in the senior high school. Is anybody aware that we have 80 cameras at the senior high school in Wilmer? 80 cameras to monitor what's going on out there. I mean, it's a small city. And so I wanted to say to the chief and to the sergeant, uh, you guys do great work. And uh, it's amazing the... the uh, uh, the connection that the uh, liaison officers make with students in the school system, and uh, I think the public needs to understand that. Thank you, Councilman. And I just want to thank you publicly because I never did get the chance to say that, you know. But thank you again for the time that you spent with me on that Saturday evening. We're glad to have you, and anybody here is welcome. Any further comments? Thank if you. If I do, do we get this bulletproof vests? <laughs> <laughs> For you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Stern. Move to adjourn. Second. The motion has been made to adjourn. We are and seconded. We are adjourned. <laughs>